All right. Welcome, everyone, to uh, this quick end-to-end -end demonstration of the uh, API Ops tool. So the purpose of this video is to take you on a quick journey uh, from seeing the tool for the first time all the way to looking at the outcome of running the tool. So we will spend some time here uh, kind of navigating through the GitHub repository, which hosts our API Ops tool. And then after that, uh, we will switch to my personal Azure DevOps uh, repo, where I show the uh, tool being utilized. So we will spend some time in there kind of looking at both the extractor as well as the publisher pipeline in action. Uh, and then finally, we will end with uh, the Azure portal, uh, just to show you two different APIM instances, uh, one of them which will serve as the lower environment. Think about that as your dev environment, for example. And then the second environment would be your higher environment. Of course, that could be sandbox, QA, or production. Uh, for sake of simplicity here, I'm just going to assume I have two environments, the lower environment being the dev and then the higher environment being the prod. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So we are uh, within the API Ops um, GitHub repo. Typically, you go to github.com forward slash Azure forward slash API Ops. Once you land on this page, um, you'll notice a couple of things. Uh, the first thing to pay attention to is uh, this link right here, right? So this is basically a, a GitHub uh, page, uh, which really hosts, think about it as a uh, documentation slash uh, self-guided workshop that you can look at. So if you kind of follow this link, um, you know, and you can go end to end kind of understanding what the tool is all about, you know, from basic concepts, um, how we uh, implement GitOps, for example, um, how the extractor and the publisher works on and so forth. I'm not going to go into the details in this demonstration as obviously the purpose here is to kind of quickly go through an end to end demonstration, but you can take a look at uh, the details here. Now, uh, going back to the repo uh, over here, the other thing you may want to pay attention to is uh, the releases section, right? So this is where we actually release the uh, different artifacts uh, or the different versions, obviously, which includes the artifacts that you need. Uh, now, what do I mean by artifacts? Uh, let's actually look at the latest version here and kind of spend some time looking at the assets included within each version. So the first thing that you will notice here is that uh, we are catering for both uh, Azure DevOps as well as uh, GitHub. Uh, that basically means that in your own environment, if you have an Azure DevOps pipeline, then you would need to download uh, this zip folder. Um, and if you have a GitHub repository where you're hosting your code, uh, then you would download the github.zip. Um, so this is the first thing that you have to pay attention to. The other thing you'll notice is that we are hosting both, uh, you know, the extractor um, you know, as well as the publishers for you. So you will notice we have both Windows and Linux for the extractor and the same thing for the publisher. Now, uh, you don't have to download these into your environment because what we've done is we've wired uh, the pipelines that you would fetch by downloading either the Azure DevOps or the GitHub uh, to automatically know that they need to reach out to this GitHub repo to download uh, these specific artifacts when they need them, right? So this is all happening seamless for you. You don't really have to worry about it. Now, the only exception to that is, of course, if you would like to host these files within your own environment, and then you would have to modify the pipelines located within these you know, zip folders that you download to actually point to a different location. Um, again, I'll be highlighting this a bit more once I get into my Azure DevOps environment um, you know, to demonstrate that. Uh, and as I just said, Azure DevOps, right? So for today's demonstration, I'm going to assume that um, you want to go ahead and uh, you know, utilize the API Ops tool within an Azure DevOps environment. But of course, uh, you're at liberty to utilize it from within a GitHub environment as well, because we do cater for both. So this is really 
what each release includes. Uh, now, in addition to that, you'll notice that we always include the source code. Uh, why would you need that? Typically, you don't need this, you know, to uh, to get the API ops working. But if you're someone who'd rather have, you know, more control on the source code, you would like to build, you know, these executables within your own environment and maybe host them within your own NuGet feed. Again, you're at liberty to do that. We like to give people flexibility, but if you just want to start quickly without having to worry about, you know, compiling anything within your own environment, all that, uh, really all you have to do is just download the either the Azure DevOps or the GitHub, depending on which type of, um, you know, uh, DevOps repository you're using um, or tool, I should say, you're using, and then that's it. That's all you need. You can go ahead and get started. So... That's for the releases as well as getting started. Now, speaking of documentation, I would highly recommend in addition to actually looking at the um, you know GitHub page that we've set up, which is think about it as a self-paced workshop. We also provide the wiki. This is going to come in handy once you start looking into the details of how you do things, right? Like for example, um, you know, uh, we kind of go into details uh, into what artifacts do we extract, right? Or, uh, for example, if you want to go ahead and override with some configuration files, uh, we share with you a bit more details. Uh, what kind of format do we expect within these configuration files? Now, keep in mind that our publisher and extractor are, are implemented in .NET. So for the most part, we do follow the .NET configuration. Uh, format to make your life easy. Again, um, you can take a look for yourself later on at the configuration files. Um, we do offer you here two configuration files just as a starting point. So the configuration.prod.yaml, this would be the file, and I can open that for you, uh, that you will need when you're promoting from one environment to another. Again, for the sake of demonstration here, I'm assuming that you only have one higher environment. Hence, I only have a single uh, configuration file. But imagine in your case, if you're promoting, say, between dev to QA, then to production, then you would have an additional configuration file. Maybe I would call it configuration.qa.yaml. Uh, now, remember, even though we're kind of following this naming convention, you can always change that if you don't like this. But remember, if you do this, then you would have to go into your pipelines that you will download. Remember the ones that we downloaded, and then you would have to modify these pipelines to actually point to whatever new name that you use. But if you follow this convention, which is configuration .whatever environment is .yaml, then our tools should pick it up automatically. Awesome. So this is as far as everything we provide you here with. So uh, just a quick reminder while you're watching this in the future, if you have any issues or you want to suggest to us any uh, feature request, uh, it's always best to go through the issues here. You can either file a bug report or you can ask for a feature request over here. Uh, also, keep a close eye on the project. So we do share our roadmap. Uh, for example, as of the time of this recording, today is June 30th, uh, 2023. Uh, we're planning things like workspaces support, et cetera. Now, by the time you watch this video, maybe in some uh, future time, uh, you may see workspaces implemented. But uh, as of you know, uh, the time when I'm recording this video, these are features that are still within our backlog. Excellent. So there you have it. This is really all you need to understand about the repository itself. So now let's switch to the uh, you know to the DevOps environment again for today's uh, demonstration. I'm assuming you guys are using Azure DevOps, but as I mentioned earlier, you can also use GitHub's. Um, you know, implementation, if that's what you really prefer. So how do you start, right? Remember what I mentioned earlier about the releases here? You come into the uh, release, and then within the actual release, you go ahead and get the release that you need. And if you remember, I said within the release as well, you download this specific zip folder. So in my case, I went ahead and I downloaded 
uh, this zip folder here. And once you extract that, really the content of that uh, will be a tools for, uh, folder and then pipelines folder. And then this is where we provide you with these pipelines. Now, please keep in mind that these are not set in stone, meaning if you want to modify them, you know, to uh, customize them for your own environment, you are at liberty to do that. Uh, what to really do over here is just a quick um, you know, starting pipeline uh, for you to start instead of starting from scratch because that proved to be helpful. And quite frankly, it's been, you know, a very popular starter pipeline that most of the customers that use these pipelines, for the most part, they leave them as is and utilize them. So the extractor pipeline is what you would use in order to go ahead and extract uh, your artifacts. Now, if you look closely at the extractor pipeline, one of the things you will notice, this is what I was talking about earlier. Notice we do fetch these, you know, binaries from our GitHub repo. So you don't really have to host them within your environment. And notice that they only differ by the API ops release version. So where is this version coming from? Typically, you would go ahead and um, declare that as part of your variable group. So you will notice over here, for example, again, uh, at the time of recording this, the latest release was, uh, you know, 4.3.0. Uh, Again, by the time you watch this video, it may be a newer version. And the beauty of this is that, say, for example, by the time, you know, you're watching this, I don't know, it's 4.5.0 and you want it to upgrade to that version. That's all you have to do, right? You just go ahead and upgrade this and you save. And just like that, you're now using the latest binaries. Now, do keep in mind, though, that updating this version does not necessarily download the latest versions of the pipelines themselves. So that's why it's extremely important that when you go ahead and check a new release, make sure you always read what's changed, right? And we typically would put like a an alert icon or something to grab your attention to inform you that, hey, this change does not only involve changing the binaries, but there may be some change in the DevOps pipelines themselves, in which case you would have to come back here, right, re-download these pipelines and utilize them within your environment. Uh, do keep in mind, though, if that happens, if you customized anything in your pipeline, you would have to make sure when you merge them that you merge the right way so you don't lose any customizations you may have done on your pipeline. Uh, but like I said, most of our customers typically keep the pipelines as is, so usually it becomes a matter of just downloading the new ones uh, and updating that release version in the uh, you know in, within your environment, and that's it. Just like that, you are on the latest version. Now, in addition to my pipelines here, I also have my configuration files. I'm not going to open these again if you want to see because I have some environment specific information here. But if you want to understand what's in these files, like I said, we do provide you with some samples here uh, that you can actually look at yourself to see what kind of information is in there. Now, remember earlier I did touch on the uh, on this file which allows you to override values as you promote across environments I'll give you a good example say for example you wanted to use a different named value well value inside the prod compared to dev say for example one of the named values you're using is, is some URL or maybe you have a backend URL you want to override you would do all that stuff within the configuration prod but what about this guy right here? So this one is for the extractor, right? So this typically comes into play when you're running the publisher. This comes into play when you're running the extractor. Now, you would typically only utilize this guy in situations where you want to be specific about what you want your extractor to extract. What that means is that, say, for example, you want to only extract specific number of APIs instead of extracting all the APIs, this is where you would come in and specify that, right? Now, again, uh, over here, we're, we're giving you a sample, um, you know, for just to kind of uh, highlight the different stuff or entities that we support within this extractor. So as of today, uh, these are the things that we allow you to kind of select. Uh, make sure you read the documentation and understand how this works. Um, you know, again, at the time of recording this, um, the way this works is that if you specify something in here, say, for example, API names, and you specify specific APIs, then we would only extract these APIs. But if you don't specify anything else, then all these would be extracted by default. Again, 
read the documentation, it's always better to understand how the tool works and you know don't make any assumptions. Now, if that behavior will, was to change, for example, in the future, then we would you know include that in the release notes. Again, reminder of how important the release notes are. Excellent. So now that we understand how that works, let me show you the two environments, right? So this is my lower environment. Think about it as your, you know, uh, dev instance. So imagine this is your dev APIM instance. And then imagine, you know, over here, uh, this is our uh, prod uh, APIM instance, right? And the idea here is that what I would like to do is I would like to promote all the APIs that currently exist here into that higher environment, which is the prod. As a matter of fact, let me show you something really quickly. So this is the lower environment. Uh, think about it as your dev environment. I have a bunch of APIs. Uh, notice I have a couple of products here. I do happen to have some name values, right? Some of them are... Uh, you know, secrets. Some of them are even secrets that are coming from Key Vault. Uh, I don't think in this example I have backends, but if I had backends, we do promote that as well for you between environments. And then uh, we also touch policy fragments. Uh, and here I have one policy fragments as well as API tags. Now, one thing I do want to highlight here, it's best to think about it this way. The API apps tool really focuses on this section right here. OK, so you, you will notice that there are a lot of other stuff that we don't touch. And this is on purpose because the focus of this tool is to help you with everything related to the APIs themselves. Now, you will notice that we do some exceptions every now and then. Like, you know, for instance, you may notice that uh, if you have existing groups, uh, our API apps tool would, for example, go into the products and, and say, OK, if it's tied to some existing groups, I would promote these for you, but we won't actually promote the groups themselves. These would have to exist in the target environment. So the point I'm trying to highlight here is think about our tool as something that's mainly responsible for, you know, stuff, I would say up to this point right here, everything inside this box, right? Our tool does not touch infrastructure. It's not an infrastructure as code tool. You would need a separate pipeline to take care of all that stuff for you. Excellent. So this is the lower environment. As you can see, everything is in there. And I want to show you how the higher environment has nothing right now. OK, no APIs, no name values, except for one, which I'm keeping because that's required for my application insights. Uh, since, again, that's considered infrastructure as code, uh, we don't create that for you. Um, you know, no policy fragments, no API tags. As you can see, there is nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how, by running our pipeline, we will go ahead and automatically promote everything from that lower environment to the higher environment. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we will start by running the actual uh, extractor, right? So I'm going to go into the extractor. I'm starting from scratch here on purpose, so I haven't even ran it once. Now, a couple of things I do want to highlight here. You will notice that this section over here, excuse me, uh, this section over here, uh, I have some values that are pre-populated. Now, when you actually download our pipelines, you may notice that these values are empty, right? And quite frankly, what I would highly recommend that you guys utilize a feature in Azure DevOps. Here, let me show you. I can show you my extractor pipeline. I highly recommend that you guys uh, go ahead and utilize the default feature, right? It's really convenient because this allows you to keep on running you know, the same pipeline again and again in the future without having to re-enter these values yourself. So there you have it. Just we didn't include it in ours because we didn't want to make any assumptions on some of these values. We wanted to, you know, leave it flexible for you guys. But in case you're watching this recording and you're wondering, OK, you know, how did you actually get these values to populate here by default because ours is empty now you know the answer uh okay so what are we looking at here a couple of things so first of all this is my dev environment uh instance right so this is the dev environment uh apim instance name all right um what about this right here uh this is again the uh, resource group so again this has to match what you currently have uh, where the APIM, uh, again, the dev, I should say, uh, APIM instance, uh, here, let's go to the second line, uh, lets, okay? So that's very important. 
And then uh, this is the repository for the pull requests. So uh, this is basically specific to your environment over here. So if I was to show you the repository later on, I'll show you quickly in a second. Uh, this is where, you know, um, where the pull request uh, that's going to result from running the extractor should actually uh, try to, uh, you know, merge that code into. Uh, and this is the actual folder, right? So this is the actual folder where, um, you know, I want to go ahead and extract the uh, artifacts into. Again, you can leave that as default. And this is the branch within this specific repo where, again, things will be merged. Now, uh, I do want to highlight something else here. Notice for the configuration file, uh, we do have two options, either the default one, which is extract everything from my portal, which is what we need for now because it makes sense. We haven't extracted anything before. Or I could say, you know what, only extract what I've specified inside the extractor.yaml. Remember that file that I showed you guys earlier? That's the one we were talking about where you would specify specific entities that you would like to extract. So this is where it would actually come into play. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and assume we want to go ahead and extract everything. Uh, one more thing that you can specify which format you would like to extract. Then I'm just going to leave the default, which is YAML. Uh, so we are ready to go ahead and run the extractor. So. Uh, while this is running, let me go ahead and explain a couple things for you over here. So notice there are two uh, stages, right? So the first stage is the stage which will go ahead and, um, you know, uh, create the, uh, or I should say, extract the artifacts from my Azure portal. Uh, so there are a couple steps. Um, now notice over here, this is where that binary is being fetched from our GitHub repo, that's, you know, that's the one we're hosting for you that I showed you, which was part of the release. Uh, but really the main step is going to be this right here. That's where most of the work. So that's the API ops tool binary, specifically extractor binary, doing all the work. And usually what I would highly recommend doing is going in here and kind of looking at the logs, right? This is very important because sometimes you may notice that, hey, no artifacts were extracted. That's your best bet. Right, so look at the logs. Um, there is a way, by the way, for you to get more logs. Uh, again, that's where the importance of reading that wiki comes into play. So for example, if you go to the logging section, you will notice that we tell you if you add a specific you know, variable within your variable group, specifically this right here, uh, then uh, our tool, which again, it's all built with .NET, uh, this is why this should be familiar to you. Uh, it will start generating more logging for you when you run over here. So remember that if you ever face issues in the future, just add that to the variable group. It will give you more information. But even the basic information here is, is amazing, right? Like, for example, over here is telling you, hey, I just, you know, extracted the name value information. Uh, over here is telling you, oh, by the way, we just extracted the logger information. You get the idea. You always want to look for this green stuff. Green is great, right? And as a matter of fact, one nice thing that you can do here is you can look at the artifacts that got generated, right? Now, remember, at this point in time, nothing made it to the repo yet, right? So you don't see an artifacts folder here yet. Why? That's by design. Remember, this is two, made of two stages. Stage number one, get all the artifacts. And by the way, you can check them, even though they're still not extracted. It's an awesome way to kind of see what you've extracted so far. So notice here it's extracting my APIs. These are the same APIs, by the way, that I showed you over here. That's why a lot of our customers, they like this, because it's almost like a one-to-one -one match, right? If you're a developer, you look at this, and then you go back here, you're like, uh-huh, okay, that kind of matches, excuse me, that kind of you know matches what I expect here. That is really awesome. Okay. We even support versioning and revisions as well. Now, while I'm looking at the artifacts here, I do want to point out that it's important to respect the structure of this stuff. So later on, don't try to be creative, right? And say, you know what? I want to get some you know, random open API spec file and somehow the API ops tool will magically be able to publish that for me. It doesn't work that way. Uh, make sure you respect the structure over here, right? Like having the APIs folder, inside the APIs folder, having a folder which is named after each API. Uh, also pay close attention to this right here, right? So the reason why we have two files, because this is dictated by the way, um, you know, APIM itself works, right? So you will notice some information in there 
um, you know, is being picked for APIM um, to generate some information that may not be picked, you know, in the specification YAML. In some other cases, the same information may exist in both places and, you know, not including it in one or the other um, you know, while you're extracting, for example, may end up being problematic. So make sure you read the docs. Um, you know, we have documentation that highlights that uh, some of the, um, you know, expectations in terms of the structure that this tool expect. So that's why I always tell people, even if you end up using just the publisher inside the tool without the extractor, I would say at a minimum, run the extractor once because this will generate the structure for you that, really the tool actually expects. Awesome. So these are the artifacts. Hopefully we got a green. Green is always good, right? So there you have it. The first stage succeeded, second stage succeeded. That is awesome. So what happens as a result of this? You will notice that we still don't have the artifacts here. And again, this is by design because what happened as a result of running the extractor is that we end up creating a pull request for you. And you will notice right here, right? It just got created two minutes ago while I was talking. And if you were to look at that, by the way, um, a PR, you should expect to see that same set of files I was showing you earlier, right? So there you have it. It's all in here. That has you know information about you know, my environment that I'm actually extracting from. So what do we do next? This is where, you know, just regular DevOps, you either approve or reject, right? So you can approve over here. And then, you know, after you approve, you may say, you know what, this looks good. Typically you want to have more than one approver, right? And then this is where you can either abandon or complete. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to say, you know what, go ahead and complete this merge. So what should happen next? Uh, if I go back to my repo, I should see the artifacts folder now living inside my repo. Excellent, right? And remember, this is the API apps repo that we chose earlier when we ran the extractor just to tell it, hey, send things to my API ops repository. So all the artifacts are now in. They're now part of my repository. Excellent. So what happened now is that as a result of merging this PR, this triggered the publisher, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the publisher here. Uh, now, one thing you may notice from the get-go, uh, you may look at this and say, hmm, why do we have two stages? I thought I was promoting from dev to prod, so I would really expect only one stage, which is, you know, publishing things here into prod only. Well, here's the thing. The reason why we, um, you know, publish the dev again, think about it as a, you know, safety check. Um, it, it's a way of us uh, of saying, you know what, we want to make sure that what we just extracted actually can be published successfully. So even though it may feel a bit repetitive, it's a good idea, right? Because that allows you to make sure that whatever is going to be published to prod will behave as expected because I was able to republish it against the same environment from which I extracted and it looks good. That's always Amazing. Now, another thing you will notice by default in our pipeline, we are asking you to approve because we don't want to go ahead and promote the production without your approval first, right? <clears throat> so this is where you would, for example, in your case, go into the dev environment, look at the publisher and say, okay, let me see what this published, right? All right. So it published, um, you know, the uh, this name value, this other name value. Okay. Let me keep going. Some Azure, you know, monitor app. And so, okay, looks good. I'm happy. This way I'll go here. I'll, I'll review. Again, typically you want to have multiple reviewers, right? So we are using, by the way, the environment feature of Azure DevOps here, but this is a uh, topic for another day. And I'm going to go ahead and approve. So once we go ahead and approve here, you will notice that uh, this will actually trigger uh, pushing to production. So notice up to this point, there's nothing that's been deployed here yet. But in a second, once that publisher succeeds against the production environment, when we come back here, we should expect all the APIs to be here, all the named values to be here, backends, uh, policy fragments, pretty much everything you know that our API apps tool touches on. Uh, but you don't see anything yet here because uh, I'm guessing this hasn't, you know, there you go. So it just started. Uh, let's take, for example, the policy fragment. So I can see here it's saying I'm putting this policy fragment called forward context. Let's confirm that indeed that made it into my production environment. Let's go to the policy fragments. 
there you have it, right? It wasn't there a second ago. Now it's there. That is amazing. Okay. Love it, right? See how easy. And by the way, notice how fast it is. It's all a bunch of RESTful APIs. Put calls in the background. And there you go. Just like that. Magic, right? All your APIs have been deployed successfully. And by the way, speed, speed, speed is key here. 